Australia will produce about three tonnes of truffles this year. And at a top price of $2,500 a kilogram, you might think growing the pungent black fungus is a licence to print money. But in fact, the majority of growers in Australia can't even cover their costs. This weekend in WA, the Truffle Growers Association is holding its annual general meeting. And while the industry's huge export potential has been on the agenda, so too has the mystery of why so many trufferies have failed to live up to expectations. <laughs> At Braidwood in the southern highlands of New South Wales, Peter and Kate Marshall are searching for truffles. This year they'll harvest about 40 kilograms from just one hectare of inoculated trees. At the moment it looks as though we've got the, the formula right. So we're growing oaks and hazels and Perigord black truffles, that's tuber melanosporum, down underground. We started off with a ruined old dairy farm the idea being that whether there'd be plenty of um, uh, nutrients still down there deep in the ground and a good rainfall, sort of environment that uh, the truffles enjoy back in France. And uh, after eight years of trying, we're starting to get decent crops. It's looking pretty good. Truffles are well suited to the climate across southern New South Wales, where hot summers and cool frosty winters provide ideal conditions for a fungus considered among the world's great gourmet delicacies. So? Yeah, the biggest one we've had is about 700 grams. The Marshall's sons, Gus and Keith, sell the truffles direct to restaurants and at the Canberra weekend markets. But the family is now also exporting their produce to France. What's the reaction been over there? It's really quite charming. Uh, we were worried that the French would be offended by their national product coming from somewhere else, but they've been really sweet about it. They like the, the nose, the flavour, the aroma, and uh, they're a little bit freaked out by the size of some of the big ones we sent. Thanks, God. Look this beautiful Julien. Classically trained French chef Christophe Gregoire has been in Australia for 12 years. He owns and runs a restaurant at Bungendor in the heart of the emerging New South Wales truffle region. Smell it. That's feel it. That's amazing product. So now this size, it's really, really rare to get a truffle like that. This one, it's about 400 grams. So uh, that's a gift of God. I know. How does the quality compare with truffles in your native France? Exactly the same. Exactly the same. A nice. Australia's truffle industry will produce about three tonnes this year and most of the estimated 200 commercial growers are small. Sherry McArdle English planted the first of nine hectares in 2004 on a 200 hectare hobby farm in the Madura Valley near Canberra. Good girl! Good girl! Good girl! We're not farmers, we're city people. We've always lived in the city, and we decided to have a lifestyle change. Then my, my husband, who has Parkinson's disease, uh, was very ill in 2004 and had to retire and sell the business. Look, well done. Because it has been very much a gamble. And I think for anyone that tries truffles, it's a wonderful diversity in farming because this farm has always been traditionally a sheep farm. We were looking to do something different, so we continue to have sheep grazing on the property and we have merino sheep. But we were also looking for diversity in farming. More truffle. Good girl, more truffle. Not quite gold, but the excitement is understandable. Truffles are worth about $1,500 a kilogram, with the highest grade produce selling this year for as much as $2,500 a kilogram. But for every successful truffery, there are many failed farms. I think the industry started off with an expectation that if you planted a tree, you would get truffle. And when you got truffle, you could sell it. Um, and experience is quite different. Graham Jewell is president of the Australian Truffle Growers Association. He planted his truffery in Victoria's Gippsland region 12 years ago, 
but is yet to harvest a single truffle. Probably the majority of plantings in Australia have not produced at all or might have produced, you know, the sort of one or two type truffle, so not a commercial crop. So again, we've got to understand what the causes of that are. Hey, there. Okay. Let's see if I can get a bit closer. At Sutton, near Canberra, plant pathologist Celeste Lind is investigating truffle diversity as part of an Australian National University study funded by the Rural Industries Research and Development Corporation. She's taking rootstock from Wayne Haslam's trees to help better understand why his four and a half hectare truffery is struggling to yield a commercial crop. There are so many factors, most of it we don't understand um, yet. Uh, one definite thing, of course, is um, soil nutrient uh, availability to the plants. These uh, trees and the truffles um, evolved in soil conditions that are really poor in nitrogen, uh, it, poor in uh, fertilizer, especially uh, phosphorus. And that's the whole aim of, of mycorrhizae, is to um, help the tree to take up more phosphorus and, and let it grow better. So if we have uh, soil conditions where there's too much phosphorus, for instance, um, that the tree don't really need the mycorrhizae anymore and therefore um, you'll never get truffles produced. The ANU study unexpectedly uncovered inferior truffle varieties from China and Europe and has led to quarantine restrictions on imports and greater understanding of biosecurity risks. Riddick is also funding further studies on truffle rot which affects up to half of some crops and whether technology can be used to measure the 80 aromatic compounds in truffles. There's no real standard for aroma and that's really left to the chefs and uh, to get on top of that we really need to identify that if we possibly can, perhaps electronically, and we're doing some research in, uh, in that regard now with the University of Western Australia. Got him. <laughs> Wayne Haslam was the founding president of the Truffle Growers Association. He says getting science behind the industry and improving management practices is vital if it's to meet its full potential. I think it's really up to us as people who are starting to produce now to really understand what the issues are and to make sure that people coming behind do get uh, adequate reward for their efforts. Find it. The growth of the industry in New South Wales has also meant greater demand for the dogs essential for sniffing out ripened truffles. Okay. Jason Mesman is a dedicated dog trainer with the Australian Federal Police. He also runs three dogs on contract to truffle growers. The things that I'm looking at is probably what your regular home or pet owner don't really want from a Labrador. The ones that will rip your hoses up, tear your backyard to shreds, rip all your flowers up. I'm, I'm looking for those actual behaviours that really frantic hunt and uh, retrieve. Good girl, there you go. In terms of the intent and the hunt drive, you're still looking for very similar characteristics as your professional canine, so your law enforcement dogs, they're looking for exactly the same sorts of traits. This weekend, Australia's truffle growers are gathering at Manjimup in Western Australia for the industry's annual general meeting. And while New South Wales may have the most individual growers, the West dominates the industry, accounting for about 70% of all the truffles grown in Australia. This truffery at Manjimup is the largest in mainland Australia. The WA industry has led the way with promotion and marketing, and this weekend's AGM will have a strong focus on exports. It may be one thing to have French chefs singing the praises of Australian truffles here, but really cracking the counter-seasonal markets of Europe will mean convincing people that truffles are not just winter food. We're going to have to get clever at marketing and promoting it as, as, a, as a, an all-year-round experience or a summertime experience. But I think that's very possible and, and should be able to be done. In other markets where there hasn't been the tradition and culture like Asia and North America, uh, there seems to be you know, a ready market. Good evening. What's our table four in the name of Belinda. In New South Wales and the ACT, the annual Capital Country Truffle Festival is all about increasing domestic consumption. And while fine dining is a major feature, 
The industry is also trying to demystify truffles. And from where I am now, I can start to smell the truffles. So the, the flavour is really being released through there. At this Canberra cooking class, the emphasis is on simplicity. Chef Andrew Haskins says anyone can cook with truffles. Fantastic. That's OK. I think being brave enough to just try different things. Why are they so intimidating? <laughs> Very much the unknown product. And that's probably about all. The price, I think, has people a little bit scared, but short of that, um, it's like anything. It takes time for it to evolve and for it to be a little bit more commonly used in the domestic scene. And once people tell their friends about the success they've had, it'll just grow from there. The region's truffle tourism trail also features truffle hunts and growers like Damien Robinson see huge potential in tapping into a market hungry for the experience. Oh, mm, that's lovely. That's a good one. Is it hot? I'm rotten anyway. Oh, no, it's perfect. But I think there's obviously a huge amount of potential. I think the combination of um, finding the truffle, then going and sitting down and eating a truffle is, is quite an exquisite thing, and I think that's a good thing that people are actually getting out in the paddock before they eat the truffle, because they they get to see the, the product in its raw form and smell it in the ground, which um, I think is um, exciting. Oh, we've got heaps more, so everyone can come for a second. Really, really nice. It comes through quite strong in the alcohol, not as strong in the, in the ice cream. And, and how do you rate uh, the Truffle Trail for a tourism attraction? Oh, 10 out of 10. Absolutely yeah, brilliant. That's great. We had a fantastic time. Yeah. yeah really Didn't good. know a lot about truffles before we came. We sure know yeah, we a lot do. now. <laughs> <laughs>